it can be understood for most people that what is required to germinate and sprout and care for a seedling. But the difficult thing is what to do when that seedling is overcome by another more aggressive species that has been introduced from the other side of the planet that has no balance here. No natural uh, predators. No natural controls. This is now our challenge. The price to pay. Do you advocate using herbicides or fire? Or I how like to control you, these competitors? I've worked, I uh, was never so happy as uh, back in the late 80s when Jim Hightower became the agricultural commissioner and he put together a set of organic farming standards that exceeded those of California. I never thought such a thing would happen in my lifetime. So, in fact, we were still working our nursery operations. We removed all the chemicals off our shelves and began to do a lot extensive research in beneficial insects and alternative fertil uh, fertility uh, issues. We learned all about green algae and seaweed and liquid fish and a lot of the trace elements and uh, mycorrhizae and we offered uh, trichogramma wasp and lace wings and ladybugs and there was, uh, it was pretty exciting but of course the public needs some help just like they don't know about buffalo grass. They don't know that there are a entire wealth of natural balances that occur if things are put together in a holistic format. I have tried to do, uh, for instance, prairie restoration on the blacklands without using chemicals to eradicate Johnson grass. I spent uh, three years before I was able to achieve enough of a control to begin to plant the native seeds. This three years required two cover crops per year to be introduced to change the weed cycle and begin to change the fertility that was encouraging these types of weeds and then the plowing down and replanting and plowing and the compaction that comes and then the burning of the diesel. And I am not surely clear that there isn't a price of erosion and the heavy hand of machinery versus the price of an application or two of an herbicide that might fast forward this problem, then correct the imbalance that the herbicide may have brought by reintroducing um, the, uh, inoculating your soil with beneficial bacteria and trying to recharge your soil. I now use a different array of methods instead of just saying there's only one way. It is now a matter of sizing up which way is the best way. There are many ways to take care of these problems. Some, although I will not say that I would like to advocate the use of chemical, I do see there are times when that becomes a way that might be used. The place has become so disoriented that when it comes to that time I do make a way with the land that would say something like this will be the last time such a mistake like this will happen. If I know that I am able to put back the land into a, a state of healing and that it will never again be treated like it had previously been treated. There are signals that come back to me from the land that says proceed ahead. There are other times 
when it's not appropriate. If we can see that it is a simple annual weed that can be easily controlled in another way, we do not just take this mindset that says you have to spray before you restore. There's a balance in there and it, it would require an open mind that would take consideration of a lot of different options and then look for the options that make sense at that particular place. 